Yo, welcome back everybody to the Brutal YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We are carrying on our series, part 17, which means we are over halfway through, which means we are starting the NFC of this series. And we're going to start off with, with football's best division, <laughs> the NFC East, where fireworks were made last year. Um, we'll start off with the New York Giants with no particular order. Mm -hmm. And before we get in, we have a very, yeah. very, very important message. To carry finish. on the message that we have been making throughout our videos. If you enjoy this video, please make sure you subscribe. We've got plenty of more content coming, very consistent. And it would mean the world to us if you subscribe. So, that message out of the way, let's dive straight into it. We're going to start off with the very first pick of the New York Giants, which was the full five rule last year and the very first tackle taken, which was Andrew Thomas, which if you remember, it was a massive was shock. A shocker. Because I think everyone had Jedrick Wills being taken yeah. first. Or and Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs. Yeah, I think it was Tristan Wirfs had been taken and he dropped all the way to Tampa. Oh, I get them. I get them too yeah. confused. Um, Tristan Wirfs and Jedrick Wills yeah. are like the same guy. <laughs> I, th I think it was Tampa they went to, but um, and then he's he did suffer. I'm not gonna lie. He did suffer a difficult start to the NFL life. Uh, he surrendered 28 pressures and five sacks in the opening five games. He was beaten consistently by inside counter moves, and he over overcompensated, overcompensated on the outside for edge rushers, created a gap inside. They went in, sat the quarterback. But apart from that. He's actually played very, very well week seven onwards. Uh, he gave up five sacks for the rest of the season. Um, he did fix, side his, his, fix his inside vulnerabilities. He's got a better hand movement. He's got a better center of gravity. And he was 78th amongst tackles in PFF, which isn't the best, but it's not the worst. There is room for improvement, no doubt, but a B minus is not bad. Yeah, it's just disappointing they didn't go for one of the ones that was taken yeah, they, they like should, 11 they should have got someone else, have got someone else but. trying to be quirky backfired a bit like the Raiders but yeah. oh yes I'll get to cover Danny Dimes alright I'm going to try not to be biased here because I don't mind Daniel Jones but I'm going to be objective here oh, so God. this was oh, an absolute shocker of a pick when it first happened this guy was an average college quarterback at Duke People only really explained this pick by saying that he went to a couple of uh, the Manning's quarterback camps um, and people were comparing the two. And I guess like, there's some similarities. Like, they're both weird looking white guys, same sort of height. But one's a Hall of Famer and one's a fumble artist. But yeah, I mean, this guy hasn't been that bad. He has been like. He's been better than the C minus grade. And some plays, he's Danny Dimes, when he's hot, he's a great player to watch. Yeah. I mean, he's throwing lovely footballs. He's doing a little bit of rushing. Hopefully, he's not fumbling. And yeah, he's good to watch. And um, something that didn't really do him well is that the Giants were still a serviceable team even when he was gone. So it kind of proves that he wasn't the driving force behind their decent-ish season. And um, yeah, it's not really convincing. No, I'm not as um, lenient towards him, let's say, because I don't think he's that good. He's very, very volatile in his performances, yet alone different games, but in the same drive, he'll have a brilliant drive and then he'll fumble out of the end or he'll ruin it out of the end. Uh, he waits until the last second to throw, which it can be good sometimes, so he waits patiently until there's options available. But that also does mean he's got a fumble issue, and that is no secret. Um, he loves to drop the ball, where it's, where he loves to turn over the ball a fair amount, 35 to 22 in terms of um, TD to interceptions. Uh, but I think it's very obvious that this season is his make it or break it season. Because yeah. the off season that they have had, they've added, they've given him weapons. Saquon Barkley's back off an injury, uh, improved the O line. So if this, if he doesn't do well this season, he's out the door. It has to be. So there's no excuse. You get Dexter, Dexter Lawrence, Lawrence. Big squishy, boy. squishy, squishy girl. boy. <laughs> Uh, he's, he, he's played every single game he's been involved in, two full seasons, six and a half sacks. He had a very, very solid rookie season, can't lie. He's done even better in year two. And PFF literally just, although it's not a Bible thing to follow, but they gave him the uh, third highest rating among second year defenders. So he's obviously doing something right. Uh, he's lined up at both tackle and defensive end. So he's got versatility as a big bonus. 
Uh, that explains why he doesn't have the stats as the more glamorous defensive ends, but he's still very, very, he's just as important. Um, he is part of a very, very good D-line, uh, and he's a big, big driver for it. Um, if the production carries on going upwards, like the stats suggest, he's going to have a brilliant career. Mm-hmm. Oh, nothing to add. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, <a leak. laughs> All right, so, next we've got DeAndre Baker. Um... A bit of a puzzling pick at the time. They do need secondary help, but this wasn't the class to do it. I mean, really poor corner class. And you've got to admit, you never saw... The giant scout saw something we didn't all see ourselves, and that is the ability to do crime and armed robbery. This guy's elite at that. And um, he's got a whole string of awards for this. I mean, lots of charges going his way, lots of charges being rebuked. You don't exactly know whether he's... Has he been convicted? I don't think he's been convicted. No, the, the charges were dropped. The charges were dropped. But um, that didn't it's a bit stop like the Chiefs a... Picking him up. Yeah, they didn't stop the Chiefs picking him up. And uh, him clearly being elite at the Chiefs. I mean, two games played, five targets, three receptions allowed. I'm not good with percentages, but that percentage doesn't really scream elite. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just a miss. Uh... Like, you've cut the guy after one season and um, yeah the whole bit in the draft where they test your personality do your interviews yada 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 the Giants didn't really uh, do a good job with that one and uh, well, to be honest I'm just looking forward to the next crime he commits <laughs> moving swiftly on to uh, a home run of a, of a pick yeah. Uh, Saquon Barkley, uh, A minus. The stats do speak for themselves. Two thousand plus yard uh, seasons. Uh, he's got over twelve hundred receiving yards since he's been in the league as well. He's easily one of the best running backs. His rookie season uh, saw him earn a Pro Bowl and he got Offensive Rookie of the Year. So he's 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 a brilliant person. Obviously, it's just a shame that he tore his ACL in the season just gone. He played yeah. what was he? The two? He says here. Uh, I, think, I think it was two games he played. Yeah, I think it was two. He played. Yeah, he played two games for tearing his ACL, and the Giants missed him because that division was so winnable last season. It was a mm-hmm. joke. And if he was there, I'm not saying he would have been a night and day difference, but he could have easily given them that one extra, one extra win over the divisional rivals. Yeah, and when he comes back next year, he'll give Jones another weapon that he's been desperately missing. Um, yeah, if, if when he comes back, there is literally no excuse for Daniel Jones to have a poor season. So, yeah, offensive rookie of the year, pro bowler, very, very good. Yeah, some of these guys' moves, you just think, oh, God, they're nasty. You think that with Lamar Jackson with some of his jukes, this guy does the exact same thing. He, make, he doesn't make guys miss. He makes guys like absolutely just make themselves look like fools. Guys missing by yards at sometimes with the moves he's pulling out. It's great to watch. I mean, they, you can't give him too much credit for this pick. I mean, he was a freak of a running back in college. Had to take him high up. They did Paid good. Off. Paid off. You get Evan Ingram. I get Evan Ingram. So, I don't really, I don't really rate Evan Ingram that much. I think he's a bit overrated. But, um, it's a solid player. Drafting in 2017 after OJ Howard before Njoku, so they did a good job of not drafting Njoku. And um, this was a, a guy that was targeted a lot of times this season. Their wide receiver call was pretty mediocre. Evan Engram did have to carry the load somewhat. And um, yeah, that is that explains his Pro Bowl season this year. I don't know how. But um, I just don't see anything too special with him. I think he can do a lot of things correct he is pretty speedy but um i think a minus has been a bit generous yeah, it's hard because he gets given an a minus when in his draft day grade and you don't want to mark it down because he's been a pro bowler but then you don't regard him as like an a level player so no. it's a tricky one yeah in terms of tight ends he's he's obviously one of the most consistent and he is one of the best tight ends ability wise at least in the league um, he did have his injury concerns prior to this season, so it was very difficult to grade consistency. But ever since Barkley got injured in um, match day two, uh, he became the fourth most targeted player in the league and fifth in receptions since that injury. So obviously, 
Daniel Jones um, sees it as his primary target number two after Saquon Barkley. But this season, with Barkley coming back and the recent signing of Golladay from free agency, you could, you could expect his numbers to drop and it won't be surprising. It is a shame because he's a quality player, but that's just how the cookie crumbles on the road. Oh, and I get one more. yeah, and I get uh, a Carolina legend, which I'm thrilled about. Hall of Famer. A Hall of Famer. Um, he spent three years before moving to the Saints, in which in that time he got a pick, just one. Uh, they received a fourth and a seventh round pick for him, so that tells you how much of his draft value he's lost. He did have flashes of brilliance, there is no denying that, but he struggled for consistency, many off-field issues with his teammates and staff. He like, had a fight with them week in, week out. He was awful. <laughs> Um, he led. He had a suspension in week 17 of his last season because of how much of a like of a cancer he was, which was described. Who said it? Teammate Landon Collins called him a cancer in the dressing room. He was that negative. Clearly had an attitude problem. Wasn't even that good when he did play. Yeah, uh, yeah I think the the Giants are happy to see the back of him, and he hasn't really cemented a place anywhere else in the NFL. He's just recently yeah. come off our team, and we let him go because he was injured all the time. So, yeah, yeah, and he had that one like decent stretch with the Saints. That's about it. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if this guy will be back in the league just because he doesn't seem to get along with anyone. He, he's his name is known enough that I reckon people yeah, put a shot on him. He's but... a big name, but. He People needs to get his know Eli Apple. They need to get, he needs to get his attitude in order, though. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but apart from that... that We're done. is the first team of the NFC East and the NFC overall. Um, uh, we'll, 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 we'll let it do its thing. Uh, there we go. Got, there we go. He'll probably, yeah, he'll, <laughs> don't worry. We'll let it do its thing. You can have a watch. But in terms of the Giants... They haven't done too bad, especially offensively. Evan Engram, Saquon Barkley, and Daniel Jones, depending on which side of the boat you're yeah, on. The big thing in Daniel Jones. Yeah, Andrew Thomas. Um, sorry, did I say Andrew Jones? I meant Daniel Jones. Uh, Andrew Thomas, not bad. Uh, just defensive-wise, apart from Dexter Lawrence, they haven't been the best. But it's not bad. It's not a bad little a bit of draft class. But apart from that, we've got nothing else to say. Nah, we're done. Next video, we're going to do Dallas Cowboys. America's so, team. tune in for that. America's team. And we are expecting a little bit of hate for that because <laughs> we know their fans can be a bit rowdy. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, until that controversial video, we'll see you next time. <laughs>